This is a list of funny and unique things that only happen in New York City. So you let us know if you find your quirk on the list. Yeah, we got to talk about it because there was a huge Reddit thread that was all about your favorite NYC fetish. Andrew, when I use the word fetish, I'm not talking about anything sexual. I'm just talking about, I guess, unique daily quirk or niche things that mostly happen to people who spend a lot of time in New York City. Yeah, and these are things that people like, like little details about the city living that you actually enjoy. So please hit that like button, check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we get into this list. Leading off, Andrew, giving a tourist completely wrong directions. This is hilarious because like, I think uh, people usually, you always get asked for directions and sometimes it's for like a certain subway or it's for a certain train or it's for a certain thing. Like I kind of know my streets now, but I definitely don't know where like the one or the two train is off the top of my head. Do you think that this has decreased over the years because so many people obviously have it more advanced smartphone tech? Yeah. Like I, I remember a long time ago, and people used to ask like crazy. I remember I used to come to New York York City with a map and like ask people where Houston was and they'd be like hey listen it's called Houston well now that you have Google Maps your phone and everything but yeah I definitely have been asked for directions even in the past year yeah but technology does change it I would say usually it's older people or somebody that I would say you know gives me like an Alabama sort of vibe moving on to number two Andrew air dropping dick pics in Times Square or the subway station. By the way, guys, this is just off Reddit. Um, Have you heard of this happening? I heard that it happens, but obviously it has never happened to me. But yes, I do hear stories. I think this more happened when AirDrop was first very popular, maybe like five, six years ago. I don't know how often it happens now, but I also don't hang out in Times Square. You know what it is? A lot of people turn their AirDrop off now or only to approve contacts nowadays. Um, But I heard it happens in Miami, other places as well. I'm sure San Francisco go in America, Paris, London, but you know, we don't live there. Um, Andrew, a big thing that's made the news recently is air tag tracking in 2023. Yeah. That that's kind of like a, another iPhone tech where people are like, oh, they're gonna need to make some changes to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something to watch out for for sure. Somebody said subway surfing. Subway surfing is getting on the subway and going stop to stop without sitting down or even touching any sort of metal railing and just using your core strength and leg muscles to balance yourself, AKA surfing the subway cart. Yeah, I definitely try to do this, but I'm not that pro at it because, but if I did it probably every day, I'd probably get good at it. But yeah, it is kind of funny. You'll see people just, mm, mm, no, because sometimes it really can jolt you in a way where it's like, you're going to need a lower center of gravity. Um, when somebody is in the subway and opens up the special exit and you run in and get a free ride to save $2.75. Yeah, yeah, obviously. And then there's always the people that are on the other side that are like, hey, man. Hey, can you open the exit door? Can you open the exit door for me? You know, because they don't want to pay the money. But uh, no, I mean, this is always kind of nice. To be honest, when you see a bunch of people going through the exit door, uh, yeah, it, it is it is appealing to go through. But you can also just do the right thing and pay two seventy five. You know what I've been hearing a lot more about, Andrew, post-pandemic, now that the uh, NYPD is back? I've heard of a lot more girls getting tickets or citations for uh, either going underneath or through the side of the subway. Oh, so more people are getting ticketed for for jumping the turnstile and stuff. Right, right, right. But uh, obviously somebody's like saying, you know, you know, this person gets prosecuted, that person doesn't get prosecuted. How do you know? Somebody says, uh, listening to New York songs while being in New York. So of course there's so many songs, particularly in hip hop, but across a lot of genres, Frank Sinatra playing New York songs while walking around a stereotypical part of New York. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, come on. How many girls was playing Taylor Swift? Welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. Welcome. And then you're just walking around New York and you're just staring up at the, like, that's like every girl's like first year. Or um, it's kind of funny was because like the electric rickshaw tours, like the guys on bikes, they're always playing like uh, Empire State of Mind. Yeah. Now or, you're in New York. And then they're riding around. It, it, it is for the vibes. Somebody said the cool feeling you get on a scooter or a bike when you can blow past cars stuck in traffic, particularly in Manhattan. Beeping or yelling bike lane at tourists. Yeah, I actually like yelling bike lane at people because it's not really rude. It's not out of disrespect, but you do kind of yell at someone who is technically in your way. So it's well, technically like, they're breaking the law, right? Well, they shouldn't be there. I mean, it's not safe to be standing in the bike lane. But um, also, yeah, I mean, obviously, David, we ride scooters. It's nice to pass 
up cars sometimes. I don't like to weave through traffic. Some guys on the EUCs, like the electric unicycles, they be zooming or like some of the e-bike guys. But uh, yeah, I stay in the bike lane. Needing to only swipe the Metro card once when you are going through. I think that this is kind of disappearing nowadays though because they recently started an iPhone or like cell phone tap, you know, like uh, through the, uh, what, NFC reader? Apple Pay. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying for a while, like you had to be pro at kind of getting the Metro cards because the Metro cards, like they're pretty flimsy. When it comes to swiping the Metro card, man, I'm only at 50%. I could only, I, I usually have to swipe it twice. Um, What do you think about using the Apple Watch? That's like if you're extra, you know, gadgety. Yeah, I like using my iPhone now. It's easier. Somebody said, uh, I really find it to be a fetish to ruin someone's tourist photo because we don't have to wait for anybody else's like spacing when they're taking a photo. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is always interesting. I think when people are taking pictures in New York, you got to be mindful of the sidewalk and where you're standing. Obviously, when we film videos or when we're parking our scooters on the sidewalk, I try to be watchful about how much of the sidewalk I'm taking up because at the end of the day, listen, if you leave a lot of space in between you and the camera, like five feet or more, people are just going to walk through it. I do not think for a photo opportunity, you just have to take like 10 to 20 photos to find the one that's clear. You can't stop up the whole flow of the city yeah because you need to take a photo you, with your arm you can't say hold on hold on hold on hold on everybody stop hold on everybody stop click somebody said stealing from whole foods or at least not fully weighing my buffet uh my buffet tray ah yeah, yeah this is, yeah, this this is, is funny the trick. Clearly, it's trick. clearly it's popular, guys. Hey, man, Whole Foods is expensive, but I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying it happens. Staying in the uh, food section, Andrew, somebody says, I love walking around the city and randomly popping into a bodega to get a chopped cheese with peppers, onions, and jalapenos, maybe lettuce and tomato. Yeah, so my thing is, like, I do like checking out different delis. Different bodegas, like bodegas, delis, whatever you want to call I mean, I think there's a slight difference. There is a but difference, right? There's but a difference. But overall, I like popping into different delis and trying out their turkey, egg, and cheese, bacon, I, I, egg, and I cheese. I feel like delis do not necessarily have chopped cheese on the menu, but bodegas, almost for sure, they do. Yeah, I mean, I would say a lot, I would say most delis in the city now will make you a chopped cheese. Right, for because sure. it's become so popular in the past five years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do like seeing how different bodegas do different things. Well, somebody said, I love the acronym B-E-C-S-P-K, which stands for bacon, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Um, what do you think about Andrew? Did say say your favorite order, man, because Yo, I know you I, are a big I'm, turkey guy. You I'm are a, about, you about the turkey, egg, and cheese. I'm a T-E-C tech spook. SPK, I like the salt and pepper ketchup and hot sauce and mayo. Yeah, mayo is key for me. I know some people don't like mayo. I'm into the mayo. And let me just throw on the B, another B for butter. Yeah, I think it actually tastes way different with turkey bacon too. If you get the bacon, egg, and cheese with turkey bacon. Um, Andrew, middle of the night bodega runs wearing your pajamas or some sort of clothes that do not look like you should be going out in. Of course, there's a famous video of Carmelo Anthony going in his night robe to like get a sandwich. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody said seeing hot NYPD female officers is always a nice treat or EMTs for girls. They like seeing the hot guys that are part of the uh, FDNY. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. And there's a whole meme going around like, hey, this is New York's finest. And then it just turns to like this really good looking like lady cop. Right. Like uh, Puerto Rican or Dominican yeah, woman. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. usually what you see is like a hot. She's you know, pretty hot. Movie. Yeah. Somebody said, I like looking up at the big buildings, especially the extra old or the extra new looking ones that are designed in a art deco style. Yeah. I think it's cool that like looking at the Chrysler building or something that looks really cool and old, you're kind of like. You can sit back and marvel at it. You know what I marvel at sometimes, David? I marvel at the Manhattan Bridge right here sometimes. When you're st- when you're on the ground and you're looking up at all these stones that are stacked up on top of each other, up like two, three hundred feet high, and you're just like, whoa, like that is actually impressive. Like yeah. as much as you know, these big glass skyscrapers are impressive. Things like that are impressive because they were built a long time ago. Yeah, when you go to another mega city, and I'm not trying to diss on Toronto because I, I like Toronto a lot, but like when you look at the architecture in downtown Toronto, it is like very, very the same. Mm-hmm. It's very generic, incredibly generic. Like Toronto might be like 
a one out of 10 on the scale in New York might be like a 10 out of 10 on the unique architecture, big building scale. Right. Somebody said riding the gray city bike like a madman, you feel so powerful. Yo, I've seen people bust crazy moves in the gray city bike. Specifically the gray one only because it's made out of plastic. Because they, Well, they're heavy. They're kind of big and heavy and they're very fast. Yeah. They're heavier than the original ones. I think, I don't know if it's made out of plastic, but it's heavier for some reason. But anyways, uh, people be zooming because they're also well lit. So you just imagine that everybody can see you. Well, doesn't it kind of look like a machine or like some sort of land cruiser from the future because it has that pink LED circle in the front that looks really modern? Dude, I think people are invincible yo, people on city bikes. people wild out on a gray city bike. Especially I've white seen, people. White people yo, are invincible on a city bike. White girls, invincible on a city bike. It's a fact. Um, halal food carts doused in white sauce. Andrew, is this an old school thing, new school thing? Obviously, 2023, some people still on it. It's they, not wrong. They, uh, I like halal food, but I'm not necessarily on eating from the halal cart now anyways. Like I used to be. I used to think it was really good, but now I'm kind of off it uh, for a number of reasons. But David, do, do you like the white sauce um, on halal from halal carts? I do. I do. I still feel like... You know, the halal guys trend, even though now there's like so many 24 7 like standalone locations around America, let alone it's crazy to see something that went around national around America. Now you can get halal guys in LA and things like that in other cities from that came from a cart on 53rd. Do you have a favorite halal cart in the city? Um, Sammy's? Sammy's is famous. Sammy's, is, known cool. To be Sammy's good. is cool. Over Sammy's in West is Village. the best one with multiple locations. There's this other one called Farouk's Halal. Oh. It's like a standalone. But for me, my favorite cart in the city, Andrew, is the Dosa Man in Washington Square Park. Oh. And shout out to him. He's from uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Somebody said uh, shouldering people who are walking and talking side by side, taking up 80% of the sidewalk. Yo, uh, somebody made a. Uh, a meme on Instagram about shoulder checking people. And a lot of the comments were like, ha ha, we, I, I know what you're trying to say, but man, I would not shoulder check random strangers. Yeah. You know, like I on I would, purpose. I would say this. If they are being like, obviously people are making a read on who the guy is that they're going to shoulder check. Is yeah, it not? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. And would you agree sometimes on a hundred percent sidewalk, there are tourists or I don't know who, where they're from. They're taking up 80%. And they don't even care about anybody oncoming. Yo, your group, you got to understand, sidewalks get small, man. And if you're walking with three or more people, that's a lot of people. So you you got to, you people got to morph your group. You know, like one person got to fall back, lean their shoulder for other people to come Sometimes by. Sometimes I want to say, where are you guys from? Y'all y'all from the countryside or something? You guys don't know how to move in the city? The city has a flow. You cannot, dot, you, you're not bigger than the flow. You cannot mess up the flow of the city, Okay. Somebody says, uh, I love hearing all the different languages being spoken. Sometimes you try to guess, and even then you have zero clue even about the region. It's also cool to hear people talk with a very thick Brooklyn accent, like speaking a language like Chinese, but with a thick Brooklyn accent. Oh, interesting. I don't even know what Mandarin sounds like with a thick... Ni hao. No, no, no. But, I, but, I, but, I, but that must come from more of the English accent that is transferring to the Chinese accent. Yeah, I actually haven't really heard that before. I'm not saying, I'm not doubting that there's not some guy who exists like that, but usually the Chinese people I know, even with a thick Brooklyn accent, when they speak Chinese, it just sounds more like Chinese. I think what this comment is trying to say is when you hear immigrants with a thick New York accent and they're also mother tongue accent. Right. So Speaking now English. So now it's three accents layered. Yeah. It's an English accent, which is like general American, layered with a hyper local New York, like New yeah, York yeah, coffee yeah, yeah, accent, yeah, yeah. mixed with the accent of where they're from. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what do you think about the different languages? It's interesting, Andrew. I probably hear French, Spanish, uh, for sure, at least in lower Manhattan, Chinese every day. I am definitely better at recognizing languages than I was before, but I still you know, if you're just saying a few words, I don't know the difference. It's, it's hard to tell the difference between Portuguese and Spanish and like Italian. When I hear Italians talk, Andrew, I always hear, wow, fanculo, a lot. And they're swearing. Um, somebody said, I love a good 8 to $10 hipster iced coffee from around the city with oat milk, whatever honey, lavender, matcha, yuzu, non-milk, milk thing that they're doing with macadamia nut. I totally love it, even though it's way overpriced. David, you're guilty of this. Yeah. I'm not saying we buy it every day, but what is your favorite expensive overpriced ice drink? Listen, guys. 
I'm, you know, you guys know me. I like Asian things. Matcha full, I think, is a matcha spot owned by white people, but they will mix Uji ceremonial matcha in front of you. It's like it's a good. white liberal woman no, it's mixing good. Uji, it's good. whisking it. Guys, the white owned matcha spot, it's good. It is good. Yeah, so so that's that's my $10 drink that I know is overpriced, but it, it makes my day just a little bit better. Damn. Somebody says leaping onto the subway cart just as the doors are closing and feeling like a superhero. Just in the nick of time. Eavesdropping yeah. on people's conversations with earbuds in, but actually not listening to any music so I can hear people like guys trying to convince his girlfriend that he didn't cheat or failed marriage proposals or all types of ratchet wild things that people are talking about. Dude, I love riding by or walking by people and hearing their conversations and you just hear one or two lines of it because you're walking past and you just catch like one wild moment like just like I was telling them that, like, like I don't know what they're arguing about. Like, I've just heard everything. I can't even repeat it, to be honest. Right. That's where the whole account overheard in NYC came about, yeah. right? Actually, a lot of those overheard posts are fake and, like, written by comedy writers. But they feel like they could be real. Yeah. So they, they feel like an exaggeration of something you've heard. But, yeah, obviously, rarely is it, like, to that level, like, 12 out of 10 crazy. Somebody says, catching a rush of AC, walking by a store on a hot day, like coming out of the window. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Like when someone's door is opening, when they're leaving, then you feel that. <sighs> Early-ish happy hour, outdoor seating in the spring when it's still quiet at like 4 p.m. And then you start to see the streets get packed. This one's wholesome. This one's uh, sort of like a Tumblr one. Yeah, I would agree with this, especially in certain neighborhoods like No Leader or something like that. It's for the vibes. Somebody says, farting as the train arrives, the sound of the train will cover it up since it's so loud, and now you don't have to fart and stink up a crowded subway car. Oh, nice. And also, the wind from the train will probably push the fart and, like, make it dissipate and, like, you know, so it dilutes into the rest of the air and it also will just blend in with the general subway smell. Watching a couple fighting on the street with both having tears in their eyes breaking up in public. Bro, you know this, how many this times... This one's crazy. This you, one's crazy. You know how many times I've seen the dude standing there straight and then the girl's, like, where you are, like, maybe five feet away being like, so what? What's it going to be? What is and, it going to be? And let's be honest. Let's be honest. The dude is usually a tall, skinny white guy who looks kind of like Beck, but like good looking, you yeah. know, like Pete Davidson. Yeah. And the girl is usually a short girl of some type, you know, and, and obviously they got to be the type of people where they don't mind having this type of interaction in public. Well, right? it's usually nearby their home. So they usually live in the city. Um, now I've seen a lot of people on the phone talk about like breaking up on the phone, but as far as the theater of seeing the two people, what do you want to no. do, Jeff? Well, so how much longer do you want to do this for? <laughs> you know what you see and a Jeff's lot, just like, you know what? Hey, uh, hey, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. This is just human life. I see a lot of girls crying on Friday or Saturday night on the sidewalk. Usually if they found out the guy that they want to hook up with that night, like went back with like another girl or something like that. Honestly, it's very euphoria and the very city. HBO girls, guys. The that, city will consume you. Somebody says, seeing the same people on the subway commute every day and noticing them, but never saying any of them. I, never saying any conversations to them. I literally saw a woman be single, dating, get engaged, married, and now raising her kid in my neighborhood, uses the same subway stop as me every time, and I have never said a word to her. What's, never said a word to her. It reminds me of the Truman Show. Yo, that's pretty funny, yeah. It's like you know that person, but you don't know that person. Somebody says, walking around and looking into people's apartments or brownstones, seeing their life through their window or what they are watching on their gigantic TVs or projector screen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know, I know like a lot of uh, maybe more Americanized or maybe European people too or white people, they like to have their big TVs next to their window and just do a lot of things in their window. Like, I think they're a little bit less like concerned oh, with the Oh, Asians sense of generally would seldom do this. Would they're, you agree? They're more, oh, they're more on the private side. But yeah, it is interesting because... At a second, third, even fourth floor, you can still pretty much see right upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are watching mainstream things. That's what I've noticed walking around these villages. I haven't personally seen anybody doing the nasty through the window, but I've seen them do other things. I think there's some theater aspect to it because the people who leave their windows open for the whole like New York streets to see their life. You gotta know. Dude, what, you don't know? Somebody, they, they probably got people texting them, oh, yo, I just walked by your window. What were you eating? Um, seeing a cool building that you would have never 
uh, imagined before. Such a, for example, Andrew, a lot of the architecture in Williamsburg, they might build a building with just a hole in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Or they might build them with like uh, little blocks protruding or all types of wild designs um, that you would just never imagine. Somebody says, showing your out of town friends something amazing and going wow this is so cool this is available to me available to me every day but the second they leave town you just binge netflix and walk to your local bodega every day in sandals but you at least you know you could see something amazing like you did that one time where they came into town yeah 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 it's funny because you're not always active but you'll get extra active when you have friends to show things around to and then you're you, it's kind of also an excuse for you to go out of your way to things it's almost like you're dormant but then you have extra incentive to get activated, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, when you are activated, you're like, oh, I could go do this on my own. But you just never do. I don't know. Somebody says, passing by a laundry exhaust of a building and smelling the fresh scent, which usually smells like bounce laundry sheets. That's funny. Yeah. Random deep conversations on the train that make it seem like a John Wick movie or a Matrix movie. For example, Andrew, they went to the museum and the security guard asked him, uh, what are you looking for today? The guy said, I don't even really know. And the security said, no one ever really does, do they? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Because, Andrew, you one time were talking about a uh, like a, oh, com- joke, a comedy a joke, joke idea. idea. And this guy on the train went and analyzed it for you for like 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 that was true. And, and you know what? I don't always have conversations with people. But, I, you know, I felt like he was a nice enough person. And I thought it was going to be interesting. So we had a long conversation. And remember, he went on to a crazy idea that the dolphins were actually smarter than humans, but we weren't smart enough to comprehend their language. Yeah. And then he was thinking about putting like, uh, um, like a, 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 a cursor on a mouse so that mouse oh, could learn to their brain right so there. that mouses could learn how to use like an iPad or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think it might work with dolphins more realistically than mouses. The uh, laser beam iPad idea. Somebody said, I like seeing 10 or 20 to 30 to 50 rats at a single time. And I like seeing some of them be the size of Guinea pigs and not oh. be scared of humans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you do agree. see this sometimes, particularly in some sections, Andrew more, uh, in East Village by that one uh, Tompkins Square Park. <laughs> no, you just see some gigantic rats. And yeah, some of them, yeah. they'll look at you like they're like they're guinea pigs. Somebody said, uh, I love watching people scramble in the pouring rain because it can flash rain quite often in New York City. Dude, the classic is like, oh my God, it's flash raining. And then you try to look for like the nearest bar that you can run into real quick just to like figure something out. Or an uh, awning, right? Yeah. yeah. Somebody said, uh, I love ordering food from Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever from really far off places and to find a weird mix that might not be possible in any other city. I'll order Uzbek food and I'll order Jamaican food and then I'll order something else all at one time. Dang, you're paying a lot for delivery fee because oftentimes if you're getting something from very far, the delivery fee is like seven bucks. But it is true because the density and diversity in New York City, you can get food from literally maybe every corner of the earth. Especially nowadays in 2023. Yeah, that's true. Somebody said, uh, I love early mornings around 6 a.m. The streets are still quiet but lit up. This is true. And this is one thing that kind of surprised me of New York because I thought New York never slept. But there is a time in the morning where there's pretty much nobody around. Like 6, 7 a.m. Actually, the world is still not going because most shops, unless they're an early morning cafe or diner, they're barely open. And, And then any retail shops are not open yet. So, and then office buildings are, like, not really open yet. Well, a lot of the 24-hour retail shops, let's be honest, Andrew, they're no longer 24 hours. Do you think it's true that some people think that the 24-hour nature of New York has gone away forever? Because there was, used to be, I guess, like, 200 to 300 to 400% more 24-hour seven spots. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's impacted for forever. Somebody said, uh, I love walking into random art galleries that are free from an up-and-coming artist. Funny. I used to love doing this, too. I will say this. Oftentimes, the art... Not to my liking. Yeah, I've, I've rarely ever walked into spots that I, I liked. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll still check them out, though. Yeah, I'll give you five minutes of my attention. Somebody said, smelling the roasted chestnuts or cashews on the street, and they smell so great, Yo. but deep down, you know they do not taste good. This is so true. This is the <laughs> one, man. The chestnuts, bro. You smell the chestnuts, and you're always like, what's that smell? That chestnuts kind of- roasting over that smells kind of nice, you know? That's a nice thing. And then you look at it and you're like, I am never going to buy those chestnuts. No, I've gotten them before. I know, There's no flavor on they're them. They're not good. And then peeling them is like a whole thing anyways. You know what we have gotten though? And you know, I'm not, you know, buy the churros from the churro lady in the subway. 
Also not my favorite churros right, from right, a flavor right, perspective, right. super old. But uh, what about the tahini on the mangoes from the woman selling them uh, uh, off the bridge? This woman is like risking her life to sell you mangoes with tahini sauce on them. Mm-hmm. I- I'm going to get them next time. Somebody said the vapor stacks coming up from the streets make the streets look aesthetic AF. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm always wondering like what is in that vapor because I ride on top of it or walk on top of it sometimes. And I'm always like, how clean is that vapor? Yeah, I actually thought they were talking about how much vaping is going on in the streets with elf bars nowadays. But yeah, they were actually referring to the vapor stacks that have been around for, you know, 50 years or 100 years, whatever. Somebody said, the crazy amount of desserts available on every street from French, French pastries to uh, magnolia cupcakes to gelato to all types of Asian pastries, all types of treats all the time. It is like a fair nonstop. Yo, yes, especially certain parts of Manhattan. Yes, 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 indeed. There's like multiple good French bakeries on the same like quarter mile. You can stack a lot of empty calories here. I'm telling you, me and you, Andrew, we probably eaten realistically. I'm going to go ahead and say 90 percent of everything Man, that's like we eat every you that's, can't tell me because i we had a channel i mean on the channel sometimes we just have to try things that, that's on why camera, off that, camera. that's why uh, uh uh you know you, you gotta walk a lot somebody said breakfast carts are they the most slept on type of food cart it seems like the other food carts are fairly rated, Andrew. What's your opinion on Yo, breakfast carts? Actually, breakfast carts are solid, man. There's Dude, not that the, many of them. No, the egg sandwiches, like you can get a sometimes I want to say bacon, egg, and cheese from them. And the coffee's decent. It's usually a dollar. The bagels with cream cheese. I've actually eaten off of them a couple times, and they still make the egg fresh. Like it's not that different. Then a bodega you know, sometimes. No, they're cracking a fresh egg, right? Yeah, they just don't have the variety because the cart's not that big. They can't carry everything. But as far as just making, like, a a bagel, egg, and cheese, like, it's decent. Shout out to the dosa, man. I'd like to see more of those, Andrew, but I do think it's difficult to make things like dosas and jimbings. You need a certain level of skill, and it's more yeah, niche. Yeah, yeah. Somebody says, uh, I love walking by the flower displays from either one of the numerous flower shops or a deli. These are cool, man. Shout out to those. And shout out to all the flower shops in New York City, man. There's a lot of everything ranging from cheap to very hipster and expensive. Doing a bunch of things that I know would have taken me way longer to do in the suburbs in a row. That I get, someone said, this is my fetish because I know that I never could have did that in the hometown that I'm from. Dude, I love like taking a meeting, then like grabbing a bite, then you pick up, like you run an errand, and then you just did it all within one block. Somebody said, being able to buy weed from one of 6,000 different unlicensed weed shops in the city. Zaza Exotic. I mean, this is pretty interesting right now. Uh, Long story short, Andrew, uh, marijuana in New York right now is in a gray zone. It's like, it's not uh, illegal. It's not legal. It's not fully regulated. There's no commission that's been designed. They're figuring things out. Yeah. Freshly baked bagels. Can you find this in a lot of other cities? I know in Seattle you can, but it's pretty rare. But it's quite uh, a lot more common to find freshly baked bagels in New York. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure you have to go more towards the morning, like around 10 or 11, to really get that fresh bake vibe. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, a lot of bagel spots, by the time it's 4 p.m., I don't know how fresh they are. All right, here's my favorite old-school bagel company, Andrew, Essa Bagel. Okay. And my favorite new-school one is Brooklyn Bagel Company. So uh, that's a modern yeah. one, and that's an old-school one from, like, 60 years ago. I'm rocking with Kosars, Kassars, and also... Uh, I like Tompkins Bagel. I like Tompkins Bagel. Somebody said, walking into a McDonald's that you know is active and probably just something volatile is going to happen at night. Dude, they're definitely talking about the Delancey McDonald's, a.k.a. Lit Donald's, a.k.a. (laughs) the one that's also right next to Sour Mouse. Shout out to Sour Mouse. Right. Also next to a train stop. Yo, how many viral videos came out of that Delancey McDonald's? To the point now where I want to say there's like four security guards there now. Dude, I... You could stand on that corner on a Friday, Saturday night and see some interesting stuff. Andrew, from fist fights to people smashing the glass with hammers to all types of unregulated things going on in there. Somebody said, uh, yeah, somebody said, I love seeing a white girl around the age of 19 to 23 melt down on the street. This is still classic. And a screaming match with a driver in front of tourists, the theater of it all. Yeah, dude, I, uh, you know, I don't hurl the worst insults at people but i will yell at drivers and i'll throw up my hands and be like yo what are you doing like yo that was my light or like stop you know i'll just yell at them and it just feels good you know and and, and it is kind of funny because there is a theater to it when you know that there's people around guys you are more likely to 
put on a show when you know there's an audience. Yeah, whether you know it or not, whether you consciously say that to yourself or not, Andrew, this is our last point. I think there is just so much impromptu public theater that almost colors every single interaction in the city. Whether you're playing basketball and you know that people are watching, you know what I mean? Like that changes. If you're arguing with somebody over a basketball call, that argument is immediately different because there's 30, 40, 50 eyeballs on you. Yeah. So I think that that is my favorite aspect for me. If I was to sum it all up, Andrew, uh, and make sure you guys let us know in the comment section below, one, what happens in your city? I'm sure this can happen in other major Western cities like Paris or London or something like that. But it's like, I just feel like the public theater of it all is how I would describe like New York City in a nutshell. Let us know in the comments down below. What is your favorite little detail about New York City? What is something that you've seen happen that you're like, oh man, that's really funny or that's unique, but that would only happen in New York. Yeah, let us know, guys. Um, until next time, we'd hop up, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.